Well, hello, my friends. So what am I doing today? Well, today I'm gonna forage for some of these wild forsythia flowers. What am I gonna do with them? Stay tuned to find out. So what am I gonna do with the forsythia flowers? Well, I thought that I would do a couple things. The first thing I have to do before I do anything with them though, is to take the flowers off of the stems one by one, removing them so that I don't have any green on the bottom. And I think what I'll do is I'll do something like a forsythia tea, which would require me to dehydrate the flowers, or possibly a forsythia syrup. Those are the two things I'm thinking of first. And either one will be an awesome way to celebrate spring. So watch as I take the flowers apart and start prepping them for making something yummy. All right, we'll just start out plucking the forsythia. You can see that each of the flowers is small, and tiny, and yellow. There's a little bit of yellow pollen in each one. So if I put my finger inside, I come off a little bit of yellow staining here. I'm just gonna go ahead and pluck the flowers off of the green stem. Just have the leaves. I'll hold on to the green stems for later. This is the hard part. For the forsythia syrup, I need to have three cups of flowers. So I'll go ahead and do that. Trying to get as much of the flowers as I can taking off the green bits. Red-winged blackbirds are clearly not happy I'm outside right now. They're sassing quite a bit. I don't know if you can hear them, but they are loud. Very unhappy with me. I think the uh, European starlings are also out here. They've been trying to build a nest in our barbecue grill, so I'm invading their space. It's a nice day in Michigan. It's the day before Easter Sunday. A little chilly outside. I think it's supposed to get in the upper 50s today, which is good. It has been miserable the last two days. We had snow again. So a little bit of sunshine will go a long way. My daughter and I went out a little bit earlier, just a little bit hiking, uh, to find some of the spots where I get my asparagus, but the wild asparagus is not up quite yet. I did find some wild onions. That was kind of nice. And I might share those wild onions with some friends. I shouldn't say we didn't find any asparagus. I found one, one single little asparagus trying to come up through the ground. And we harvested him. That was the first spot stop I made. And I was surprised to only see one. We went, and actually there was another one close to coming up, but I would say give it three, four more days. I went to the other spots and nothing. There's absolutely nothing coming up, which I, that's the part I found really amazing. I expected to find more asparagus after finding that one little piece but that's okay. We'll just take our time harvesting them. And hopefully I'll get some in the days to come. Maybe next week, midweek, I'll go out and see what I find. Make sure the green stays off. The green tends to make your syrups, and your jellies and jams a little bit on the bitter side. Now I've never made forsythia before. I've made a jam with violets, wild violets. That's so good. And I've made it two ways. I've made it once where I just strained the flowers and a second time where I've actually mushed up the flowers and put them in the jam. Both are really tasty. Uh, they give you a little hint of spring, a little floral, a little color, a little pop of flavor, almost like a honey. I've not made anything with honeysuckle, but I know that that's another spring flower that I can do something with. Lilac would be another one. All of them are really nice. 
course your elderberry flowers are real nice too, but I usually wait. I keep the flowers on the elderberry bush because I really want the fruit. I don't want the flowers. Although I've always thought about making an elderberry jam from just the flowers, like elderflower jam, I guess it would be. And I thought about making, there's some wines out there made with the elderberry flowers, but again, I really just wanted the berries to grow, so I left them be. But I do like foraging in the spring. There's not a whole lot you can find. Usually this is your early spring, so I might find some spring greens. Of course, you saw my ramps from last weekend. Morels will be up soon. Looks like I can no longer eat them or maybe not trust my body with them. I had some ramps and morels, I don't know, three weeks ago in a frittata and I swelled up. So I didn't think it about the mushrooms at first and the next day when I was really worried about whatever, I contacted my doctor and she could see the swelling in my face. I mean, everything was puffy. My neck looked like it non-existent. I had this like solid column of a neck on top of my head. And she said, have you eaten anything new? And I'm like, well, no, but I did have some mushrooms last night. So I'm thinking maybe I'm developing an allergy to morels, which would really stink. So I'm not willing to try them, I don't think but I still will forage for them. If I find them, I might dry them down and pass them off to a friend who might like them. I'll talk to the doctor again and see what she thinks about that before I eat them. But it would make me a little nervous to eat something where it looked like I might have reacted to it. Anytime you're foraging, actually, you should A, know what you're looking for, and B, really watch when you eat it to make sure you don't react. And I always say, when in doubt, throw it out. And actually, I don't, I'm don't. i not the only one that says that. Anybody who's doing the foraging will tell you the same thing. When in doubt, throw it out. Know what you're doing. Forsythia has, I think there's like 15 or 20 varieties that grow. Um, the weeping Forsythia is the one that's used in the traditional Chinese medicine. I don't remember all the statistics about it, but I know that it can it can be used for anti-inflammatory, I believe. And I'll put some other things down below. And I do believe that it's got some antiviral properties to it. And really for the forsythia that they're using in the ancient Chinese medicine, what they're what they're harvesting is the forsythia flowers will they're from the olive family and they will produce some small fruits and those fruits are really what they're using that and the bark of the forsythia so I'm using flowers there still would be some properties in the flowers but not as much as if I was harvesting the fruit or the bark and I'm not sure that I have seen a lot of fruit on forsythia I've always just used forsythia to force blooms so in the spring you have a really nice little centerpiece with some stems of pretty yellow flowers, kind of like here. But this is a new one for me. So we'll see how it turns out. As I said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make the, the syrup first. Maybe we'll have it for Easter Sunday pancakes. I don't know. But you'll see the process. And decide for yourself if you wanna make any. I think the other spring flower that I've used a lot of actually is dandelion. And dandelion gives you that really pretty yellow color too. The only thing I don't like that I've made with dandelion is I don't like dandelion wine. I made it one year and ugh, it was gross. I don't know if my recipe just had too much ginger in it. I, I like ginger, but that was disgusting. So I am not apt to make dandelion wine any time soon. I've made other edible wild crafted wines, not that one. And I suppose if I added enough sugar with the forsythia, you could make a wine, anything to add the sweetness. The syrup's actually going to be three cups of flowers steeped in some water 
and then the sugar added in. That's pretty much it. I am not going to use natural sugars. I'm probably just going to use regular white sugar. I'm not going to worry about other stuff there. My husband's going to come in, out and look and say, what are you doing? Because <laughs> he just heard him go out the door. All right, well, y'all don't have to watch me pluck all, all the flowers for the next, I don't know how long it will take. So I will bring you back in a little bit and show you the next step. All right, I have all these great forsythia flowers. Now I'm going to mix them with water and some sugar on the stove to make my forsythia syrup. Basically, it's just a simple syrup with adding flowers. I'm going to do a double batch. So I'm going to put in four cups of loosely packed forsythia flowers. Then I'm going to add four cups of water and four cups of sugar. Now I'll go ahead and turn on the heat, medium. We're gonna to try to dissolve all of our sugar in there, stirring it pretty consistently. And then take out the syrup afterwards. I'm looking forward to this today. Okay, so lots of cook in here because there's lots of syrup down in here. Lots of sugar, I mean. Flowers will get all wilty eventually. Oops, there's a stem I missed. those stem pieces out. Thought I got them all, but you know, not perfect. And we'll go ahead and simmer this lightly until sugar's dissolved and until we get a nice golden yellow color. Yum, yum, yum. Spring in a bottle. All right, so I have it boiling for the last half hour and I am going to go ahead and strain it out. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and press the flowers so we get all the good essence of the flowers coming out into the liquid. You can see how beautiful and yellow it is. But we're just going to push it through. My Forsythia syrup, it smells a bit green or flowery. Best way to describe it. You can see right there, a little bit of, on my teaspoon, taste it right for you. Oh, it's really interesting. It tastes, you get that hint of green freshness, as well as a, a hint of honey. It's really pretty. It's pretty to look at. It'll be really amazing on those pancakes. So take some time this week, find a forsythia bush and make your own forsythia syrup.